the brain controls everything, everything about you. And we can control your brain. <laughs> People look at movement disorders and they say, well, a person's shaking, they're moving funny, they're walking funny, they're stiff. It must be the muscles. It's not the muscles. It's this distributed network in the brain. 100 billion neurons determining our movements, our judgment, everything about us. If we position an electrode in just the right spot and we deliver pulses of electricity in just the right way, we can stop a tremor or help someone move more smoothly and fluently. The brain is still the most advanced computer on this planet. The complexity of this is, is, is mind-boggling, no pun intended. Ready for a little brain surgery? <laughs> sure. People with Parkinson disease like Tim, they often actually do very well with their Parkinson for long periods of time. But as they take medications for the Parkinson, they can develop dyskinesia. I've had local anesthetic before for some reason, I'm sure. Those bumps will go away in, you know, six months or so. <laughs> yeah, we're here for my first part of the three-part series for the uh, uh, deep brain stimulation procedure. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. So that's your uh, Christmas card photo Thank you. for this year. Like a lot of Parkinson's patients, one of the main side effects is, you know, kind of fidgety, uncontrolled movements. At some point, you're going to wiggle so much, it's going to start to get in the way. He crossed that threshold, and Tim didn't go in saying he wanted deep brain stimulation. But it turns out that what Tim needed was what the surgery is great for. There he is. We know how to suppress those movements and keep people on so they feel good all the time. Permission form says we're implanting a DBS lead in the right side of your brain today to address the symptoms on the left side of your body. Okay. Do you have any questions before we get started? Uh, no. Okay. Game on. most applications of deep brain stimulation, there is a little tiny volume of brain tissue that is sending out some aberrant signal that's causing a problem. Just pretend we're not even here. We're just gonna be drilling a dime-sized hole in the top of your skull. It won't hurt. We can disrupt that bad signal and produce some therapeutic benefit. There are parts of the brain where if I stimulate, I can make you feel happy. The problem is all around that volume of tissue are a bunch of other circuits that are controlling other things that we would rather not disrupt. One of the reasons we like to do it with the patient awake is the patient can tell us what they're experiencing. And that's very helpful for knowing if you're in the right spot. The millimeters matter. We put the lead down and we say, well, we think we're here, but then all of a sudden we realize we're too close or we're too far away. A tiny amount of electricity can change an entire circuit, the way that all these islands are talking to each other. Very smooth. We'll stimulate, we'll push current, and suddenly... You having any tremor yet? Okay. Nope. Maybe their anxiety goes down, maybe their mood improves, maybe the tremor goes away. That's the lead that they're going to keep, hopefully, for the rest of their lives. It's a process where we're taking in many factors to come up with the safest approach and the best long-term outcome for a patient. And we do this by having an interdisciplinary team. A neurosurgeon, physical therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, occupational therapist, speech and swallowing expert. All of these different players who are evaluating the patient before the surgery can influence the decision about how we should go about doing it. It's so much more powerful when we can all talk to each other in the same room about the same patient that we have all very recently evaluated. All right, I like it. I do too. Right. Let's keep it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of x-rays here, lock it down in place, show you back up, okay? You get to see the night. 
As we've evolved deep brain stimulation, we've come to understand that the surgery is the minority part. I mean, I know it's a big deal for the patients, but it's the workup. It's getting the patients ready. It's understanding the patient. It's choosing the right target in the brain. It makes a dramatic difference to have all these different specialists take turns making recommendations in order to get the best outcome. And frankly, I love that. One thing people forget about Parkinson's disease is that the non-motor depression, anxiety, and the cognitive dysfunction are much more disabling than the motor features that we see. And if you don't pay attention to it, you can get into quality of life issues and suicides. We want to make sure that they get to the right mental place that they need to be. Thank you. In great healthcare, it's a continuous beta test of, of a process that's improving. We've learned more about how the human brain functions in the last 15 years than the entirety of human history prior to that. The future of neuromodulation is already here. Hey, thanks for watching. We know the news can be a bummer sometimes, but at Freethink we're trying to tell inspiring stories of people changing the world. If you want to see more of that, subscribe.